and welcome back to Karaman Valley Campus and Clay. You'll see in the last video, I showed you how to put together a little birdie. It's a, like a garden hanging ornament. And down here, some holes I've left them for, I'm going to put some macrame string through them and hang it up in my garden shed so that it looks quite nice. We've used a beautiful variety of texture, obviously from our rolling pin and also from some leaves that I found in the craft section of one of our local craft stores. Gorgeous texture, but you can use found leaves just from the garden or, you know, anything, stamps that you've made up from um, other little bits and pieces like gum nuts. So I'm just rolling out a little bit of clay into a coil because I'd like to put some decoration on the top of my birdie just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. And we're still using that lovely mid-fire Chris's Light Medium Speckle. Okay. Now you might find it a bit easier at this stage with your birdie to put some paper underneath it. It just allows you to move it around really easily without having to pick it up all the time. Keep compressing the edges, making sure they're nice and strong. any sharp edges make sure you just smooth those down with your finger as well if you need to put a little bit of water on your finger just to do that that's fine because once you know it's nice and smooth you don't have to worry about it being sharp after it comes out of the kiln if it's sharp if it's got sharp edges on it before it goes in they end up being really super sharp by the time it comes out so just keep smoothing them off okay with my coil, I just want to make a little bit of a, a decoration up along the top of my birdie. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water there and just with my serrated rib. Score the edge. And where I'm going to join on my coil, I'll score the edge of that as well. Just it helps to create an edge for it to grip on. Okay, it's just a matter of sitting it up against my birdie and smooshing it together a little bit at the end. And then where it's going to join again, I'll need to get my serrated rib. bit more water and just push it down slide it into place until you can feel it gripping and again a little bit of water push it down Bless you, Iggy, that's my little dog. Now, if you don't have a serrated rib, you can use a fork. It does just as good a job. Okay, and that's enough there, so I'll just break off my coil and again, smooth down the edge. with that that looks a lot better than just being very plain and there's other things you can add little balls of clay as well to make it look quite interesting in fact we might do that just pinch a little bit off the coil that I made and roll it between my hands again a little bit of water serrated rib or a fork it can even be a toothbrush I've got some brushes here that I use sometimes as well and add that into place. Again. And 
I'm just smoothing the side of that ball down onto the coil just to ensure that the join is strong. I'll come back into it and smooth it up with the brush soon as well. And last one, the coil. Use my brush this time. So you could use a toothbrush just the same way to create a little bit of texture there to help it grab on. It's got slip on it, which is just watered down clay and push it on and then just smooth it in with my thumbnail or you can use a, a paddle pop stick or some tools. Now when that firms up a little bit more, you'll be able to um, finesse it a little bit better as well, which means make it look a little, the join look a little bit better. But for now, I just want it to grip and to firm up a little bit. Then it's a good idea just to grab a soft brush, paintbrush, just a craft brush is fine. And it will smooth it out a little bit for you. Fingernails are the enemy, so I'm just trying to get rid of some of those fingernail marks. Not that I have too many nails. I tend not to in this game. But it does help with the brush. It helps to make the joints nice and smooth and professional looking even. Lovely. And I'll just let that dry nice and flat now. If you're um, in an area that gets a little bit of breeze into your studio or into your workshop, like in Australia, most of us have our workshops in a shed or um, like mine, half of this is open to the air, open to the um, outside environment, then what helps to dry it nice and slowly so no cracks form is if you pop it in a, a plastic box. And I use plastic boxes a lot. this one I might pop it in this one actually so in this box I've just got a piece of newspaper in there because as things dry they do um, shrink by about 10 to 15 percent depending on the clay that you're using so because I don't want this to crack when it's drying as you can see I've got my nice little decoration along the top of my birdie I'm going to sit him in flat In that box and just pop the lid on it doesn't have to be um, like secured down flat it can be slightly ajar so that it allows some air to get in and it will dry in there over the next week or so nice and flat well thanks again for your time today and for coming to visit us at Cromavella Canvas and Clay I hope you've enjoyed the video um, let me know. I'd love to see your comments and definitely I'll be interested in seeing your projects come to life as well. Um, it's been a pleasure joining you in these times, uncertain times, so I hope this helps you pass some time away in a very positive fashion. I'll talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.